Welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're gonna walk you through repurposing a small cart. In this cart, this is Aaron's table and the top is broken. So Ray's taking it apart and preparing it. Ooh, wait for it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just taking it apart, prepping it getting it ready for prepping for what deglossing yeah we're gonna chemically strip the base so we can restain it but unfortunately that top is super twisted in the previous clip you saw Ray take apart this table and I wanted to show you the top now this top is badly warped and that's caused by excessive drying and wetting and drying and wetting without proper protection. The, warp, the wood top is now ruined and the client has requested us to build her a brand new one. Now, if you have a similar table like this at home, we strongly recommend to treat your table with a really good quality butcher block oil and conditioner. The oil and conditioner will repel the water and prevent the warping from happening. So when I'm building something, I always start with planing. I like to plane down to my rough dimension. This, in this particular case, I'm planing down to an inch and a quarter. From there, I like to take it to the table saw and rip it to dimension. Always wear your safety glasses. And I'm always over cutting pieces or making additional pieces when I start planing as well as ripping to dimension. That way, I've always got extra pieces if, if parts fail. And I will say here, whenever I use a table saw, if you've used a micro jig, they're amazing. They're, I don't use a table saw without using a micro jig. It's just a great tool to have in the shop. So basically at this point, I process the wood to a, a rough dimension. So what I like to do at this point is, is lay it out, take my better pieces. You always wanna overcut, make additional pieces because you're gonna have pieces that fail. So I've laid this out to get the better pieces I can and this is over length. Now, when you cut your width, you can cut it so it comes out to exact dimension or trim it at the end. Cut it over size and trim it at the end. Right now, what I like to do is lay it out like this because I'm getting ready for glue up, which is up next. And then I'll just number my pieces. So when I lay this out for glue up, I know which order they go in based on how I've laid it out. I've laid out my pieces, the number pieces corresponding to the way I laid them out originally. So now I'm just gonna laminate, put the glue on and laminate this up. A good wood glue, you can apply it. I just apply it with my finger as you'll see, but there are, there's rollers you can get to apply the glue, uh, chip brushes like this one, natural horsehair brush, uh, chip brush, and then you know an acid brush works too. Whatever you're comfortable with. I just use my finger. The wood glue that I used is a water-based wood glue, and it's not toxic, so I don't mind getting it on my finger. And I always keep a damp cloth handy just to clean out my finger or any excess but also when you see when I put it together it's gonna have the squeeze out and I like to wipe off the squeeze out with a damp rag just to, to take off the excess it makes it easier when you're sanding it 
and processing it beyond this point for, for, for finishing purposes. Now what you're noticing here is I'm, I'm moving around with my finger. What I'm trying to do is leave it a little bit mounted in the, in the center. It is going to squeeze out as I compress the clamps on it. So as long as you get a good coating and you don't want it so thin <clears throat> that you can see the wood through it basically, I'm only doing one side on these edges. So I want a good generous amount of, of glue on there. This is over length and I'm going to be cutting this down after but I try and get one in fairly straight not that it's crucial you don't have to worry about that so much right now and just press them all together make sure that they're sitting flat you know let's get it as flush as you can and I just start to snug up one end typically and just make sure they're down on the clamp now what I find almost inevitably, you're gonna get some, a little bit of stepping. I'm gonna process this further anyway, so that's not crucial. But we can sand that out after the fact. And you want a decent amount of pressure, but not too much. Now I like to put one clamp on opposing keep the pressure even segment I process sanded the, the uh, slab basically this is a small slab but it's a good example of how you're going to process any slab but what I'm going to do now is I've already I've already pre-squared the one end cut it got it squared up so I'm just going to take my measurement at this point what's my overall my final cut what's my overall length and this one is only 23 and a half so what I'm going to do is just put a mark down for 23 and a half off both both sides and the reason I do that is because when we put the track saw down in the track you want to line both sides up and get a straight cut so beyond that I just wanted to talk about the SP6000 a little bit it's a Makita track saw it's a good alternative if you don't have a table saw or you don't want to spend a lot of money on a good table saw. This does a very good job of cutting sheet good, uh, laminated tops, any bigger surfaces that you have to deal with and you want to cut. In addition to the saw, this is the XG6000 here. This is the track. You can get it in a 10 foot track. And I'm going to go into a more of a tool review on this and my feelings on it. I've used this saw for a couple of years now, uh, maybe three years. And um, I'm just gonna give you a little feedback when I do a tool review on that. But in addition to that, I like to use the Fest Tool quick clamps. These are a, a, a very good clamp. They fit into the, the slot on the tracks, so you can secure it down. 
Now typically when I'm doing a narrower piece like this, or cross cut for example, I want to clamp it down and hold it in place. The track does tend to move around, I find, when, it, when I do that. So on a long cut, lengthwise, yeah, I use a 10 foot track. Cutting sheet, for example, I don't find I have to clamp it down, but with this, I like the added benefit or security that it's going to stay in place. The other thing I like to do, with especially narrower pieces like this, is take a spacer block and add it to each side off the, the further distance because when you clamp the ends down, it's going to want to bow the track, and this helps prevent it bowing, keeps it more in line and flat. So I'm going to set up to do the cut now and stay tuned, I'll be right back. So you just saw me trim it to size, that's a final size, this is my final cut. So now we're just going to chamfer the edges, so give it a little round with this particular chamfer and there's a lot to choose from, there's, a, there's many different chamfer bits you can get. I just use a trim router. This one's just a quarter inch round over. So it's very simple, but uh, you know we're gonna chamfer this out now so the edges are a little softer, not such a hard profile. But aside from that, the only thing I like to do is, is start with my end grains. Uh, I'll chamfer those first, just to reduce the chance of tear out. If I do get a little bit of tear out, then, then the chamfer on the other side is, is gonna be pretty much mitigated by the round over cut itself. So there's there's not a lot of cleanup or um, repair that you have to do because some tear out happen. And now that I've said I wanted to limit my tear away, the universe has just handed me a big steamy pile. <laughs> so now I'm gonna have to address this. You could either repair this by filling it. It's a pretty good tear away. I took another angle of this. Hopefully you can see it in the other, the other video, the other clip of the video, but it's about three inches long. And it's, it's a good rip. So what I'm gonna do in this particular case, because this is an oversized top and I can get away with this, and I'm gonna trim it down on the table saw, take about an eighth of an inch off and reroute the edge. It's gonna happen. As soon as I said it was, I brought it up, it, it happened. So <laughs> I think the wood whisperer says, you know, you're, I and mean, I'm paraphrasing here, but I, the sign of a good woodworker is how good you repair your, your mistakes. Uh, fortunately with this, I've got a little bit of leeway room so I can trim it down and reroute it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now we're getting down to finishing the top. At this point, I, if you have any little voids in your top, what I like to use, like a knot, uh, a little bit of tear away, something like that, you wanna fill that in. We're getting this ready for finishing. So I uh, use a two-part epoxy. It's very basic, a one-to-one -one ratio. This, is a, this one's a quick cure. Uh, you can get them in different curing times, this is a 15 minute, I find it's got enough working time that I can get my voids filled in a top. Again, you want to leave this, this proud so that when you sand this off, you're going to sand it flush. It doesn't stain the wood. It fills in the knots and, and gaps, that type of thing. If you have some imperfections, which you're probably going to get, very few of us get the privilege of working with very clear wood. So I like to fill those in 
and then just belt sand that out. I typically will go with a 120 belt for, for my belt sander because it's pretty aggressive. And then orbit sand from there going up in my grits. I'm going to talk about sanding different sanders I think in another video but uh, um, because there's all, a huge variety and there's a lot of different techniques with just sanding and if you're building things or making things you're going to have to get comfortable with sanding because it's going to entail a lot of sanding. So let's get this sanded out and ready for finishing. This tabletop looks awesome. It's all put back together now. Yeah, we come to the end of this video. This is really based, the purpose of this is to repurpose this cart. So we have three other videos on how to strip, mm -hmm. stain, and seal. It's a three-part series, which will walk you through stripping out. We had to strip out the base of this in order to restain it and reseal it. The top, I kind of walked you through the steps behind making a small slab. I will be doing some other videos on, I have a table to have to do here shortly, so that's a little bit different, it's definitely bigger. Yeah. Um, but we hope that we've inspired you to repurpose a piece of furniture. You know, if the tabletop is damaged, why not build a new one? Yeah, we really encourage people not to throw it in a landfill. This is just a basic IKEA cart and we've given it a new life. Just a little bit of elbow grease and some product. Yeah. And hopefully you have a little bit of know-how to do it now. And that's really what we wanted to show in this video. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like, then like and subscribe. Bye for now.